Picking up right where we left off, the fighting at the Gazala in the summer of 1942, let's look at the Cauldron, which is probably the most famous action of that battle. Taking a big part in the fighting there was the 32nd Army Tank Brigade, of which the 7th Royal Tank Regiment was a part. Commanding this regiment was 37-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Bob Foote. He was an 18-year veteran who had already seen service in Palestine and had been transferred to Africa only in April. On the 6th of June, he led an attack against a superior German force. In the face of heavy fire from artillery, his tank was knocked out and he was wounded in the neck while making his way to another one. In spite of this, he continued to lead his men in the attack perched atop the tank. His advance was nearly stopped by an enemy flank attack, backed up by anti-tank guns. As his second tank had been knocked out, he dismounted and continued to move forward on foot, setting the example to keep his men going. The fighting continued right to the evening and ended in success as the German attempt to encircle two British divisions had been stopped. Five days later, on the 11th, the Germans' 15th Armoured and 90th Light Divisions advanced on the so-called Knightsbridge Box, a British defensive position east of the cauldron, manned by the 201st Guards Brigade. The German attacks, combining tanks with anti-tank guns, were successful, and the guards, under threat of being surrounded, began their withdrawal two days later. Tasked to delay the German armoured advance in order to protect the Knightsbridge withdrawal was Lieutenant Colonel Foote. On the 13th of June, in spite of the few British tanks that remained after the previous day's fighting, he managed to organize his defenses and put his own tank in an exposed position so that the rest of his men could see him. His tank had been damaged and had no operable guns at this point, but he remained there, again working to set an example for his men. Just as his attack a week earlier had been successful, so too was his defense on this day, and the guards were able to withdraw from the Knightsbridge box by nightfall. This was one of the few bright spots for the British on the 13th of June, which was otherwise a total disaster as they lost three quarters of their tanks and were pushed back at multiple points. Not for nothing was it quickly nicknamed Black Saturday. The next day, the 8th Army's withdrawal from their lines began, and the Germans' route to Tobruk was open. This long beleaguered port was finally captured on the 21st, along with more than 30,000 men, making it the largest single British surrender after Singapore in February. Lieutenant Colonel Foote himself was captured on the 23rd of June. However, he didn't have to wait until war's end to be released, as in September 1943, after the Italian armistice was signed, his captors allowed him to escape into Switzerland, which he did, and remained there until October 1944, when he finally returned to Britain. In fact, his VC, which was awarded for his work during virtually all the Battle of Gazala, wasn't awarded until May 1944, as the rest of his men had been taken prisoner along with him. At the end of 1944, he returned to Italy, this time as a staff officer at the Allied headquarters, and finished the war back in Egypt as a brigadier. He remained in the army after the war, retiring as a major general in 1959 after 36 years of service. In retirement, he worked on the Army Corps Benevolent Fund and VC and GC Association, dying in 1993, just two weeks short of his 89th birthday.